Welcome to the Light Up Your Business podcast, the show where we dive deep into the world of small businesses. I'm your host, Tammy Hirschberger, and each episode will bring you inspiring stories, expert insights, and practical tips to help your small business thrive. Whether you're an entrepreneur just starting out or a seasoned business owner, this podcast is your go-to source for success in the small business world. Let's get started. everyone. We want to welcome you back to Light Up Your Business Podcast. I'm Tammy Hirschberger. And today we have kind of a fun episode. We're calling it Flip the Script. I have my good friend and fellow co-worker with me. Her name is Kellen Priest. Hi, Kellen. Hi. Do you want to tell my audience a little bit about yourself quickly? Sure. So my name is Kellen Priest. Um, I am a yoga teacher and I am helping people uh, move through difficult emotions and help them move through grief and stuff. So that's kind of what I do. And then I, uh, yeah, I just love life and just here to help others. So. What's the name of your business? Um, so my business is called Sharon Lightly. Yoga. Sharon Lightly. Okay. And mm-hmm. you teach at the Zenden in Fruta right now, mostly, right? I do. Yeah. I teach twice a week right there. Okay. And, and if they wanted to get a hold of you to get some yoga sessions, how do we do that? Um, so you can email me at kellenpriest at gmail.com, or you can also reach out to me on my website, which is sharonlightly.com. Perfect. And she's always on Facebook. She's on Instagram. She shares cool videos. Yeah. She has, um, what's that thing you email? What's that called? It's a, um, I just drew a blank. Uh, <laughs> like a newsletter? Is that what you call yeah, it? Yeah, I guess I do a, I do a weekly uh, email, and then I also have a blog that I post every other week. And then I have a YouTube video that releases every Wednesday. Yeah. So if you guys are looking at starting yoga, beginning yoga, advanced yoga, private lessons, Kellen does all of that and she's great. So, okay, Kellen, I'm going to throw this over to you. Uh, The plan for today is she's going to kind of interview me, which should be kind of interesting. You can listen to me yammer for a little longer. (laughs) And then, um, you know, if you have anything else, Kellen, off the script, go ahead and just say it and we'll get this thing done. So go right ahead. All right. Well, yeah, I just thought it would be fun to get your expertise, Tammy, and all of your knowledge. Um, So the first thing I would like to ask you is, was there a moment or something that led you to the decision to be a business owner, or did it just kind of happen? That's a bit of a drawn out question. Um, I'll try not to drag it out too long. But the for me, I grew up not thinking about that. We didn't have business owners in our family. Like we had poor people in our family. And I thought my whole life, I'm just going to work for someone, right? And then I started working for this woman named Margaret. She owned, at the time, Bottom Line Marketing in Rock Springs, Wyoming, when I lived there. And she was an amazing businesswoman. And she kind of, I don't want to say mentor, because she actually became more like a mom to me. But she kind of just slowly taught me business. And just, I saw what she could do. And I was like, this woman's amazing. I mean, she had Cowboys Against Cancer, which was like a nonprofit she started because she had breast cancer at one point. And she grew that huge. And then she had her business. And I think for me, I just saw like, she's a woman and she can do it. Right. And she was a mom and she didn't have these massive degrees and all this crazy stuff. And she had done it. And I thought to myself, well, why couldn't I do that? And so I just started kind of thinking about it. And then through opportunities of friends we knew, we started the furniture business we had. And I think that was possible in my mind because I thought, well, we have some connections of people who do it. You know, I kind of know how to find the builders. And so we just kind of started. It wasn't the most successful business I ever did, but it was a start. I learned a lot from it. And then the trucking business kind of led from that because that was our furniture connection. And we thought, well, I don't, you know, I was still selling furniture on the side online, but that was really, it was kind of a failure in general because I didn't make tons of money on it, but I did learn a lot. And through the trucking company, I was able to, you know, pick up vendors and things like that. And so we did that for a couple of years. And then, you know, my husband was working on the side and then like the barnyard literally came to us. I was at the furniture store that we had went into and I thought, I'm going to expand into a furniture store. Try that before we say it's a no go, you know. And so I'm in there and I'd only been in there like five months and the old owner of the barnyard comes in. And he's like, do you want to buy my business? And I was like, I cannot imagine that. And so we were just chatting away because, you know, my husband used to be ex-Amish and he's a Mennonite. And so before long, I was like, well, what's your price? And so he tells me the number and he wanted to sell the real estate with it. And I was like, I can't fathom that kind of money. It was over a million dollars. And I was like, 
in my mind where I was, that was just not possible. And so I thought, well, it'd be cool. I'm sure my husband would like it, but probably not. So then he goes away, comes back a year later, asks the same question. Do you, do you want to buy my business? And I was like, well, what is it, the price today? And so he tells me he moved on the price some. He decided that he'd be willing to sell the real estate separately. And then that dropped the price a bunch. And I was like, okay, now this might be possible. And at that point, I realized the furniture business, I just wasn't loving it. it I was barely breaking even on it. It wasn't doing great. I mean, I was paying the bills, but it wasn't exciting. So I thought I talked to John and John was like, sure, I'd be willing to try it. And so we bought it. And that was, you know, eight years ago. That was a great business. The window cleaning business, insanely enough, my business partner was working for us doing uh, shingling sheds and it just, he was having some issues and I thought, you know what, why not? Why couldn't I start a window cleaning business? And I just went for it, man. So sometimes you just have to go for it when you have the idea. Yeah. So the window cleaning was like the first one you started from the ground up? No, the furniture was, uh, the, the furniture. trucking was, yeah. I mean, that was the, the first one we started from the ground up that got the biggest. I mean, we were doing almost a half million dollars a year when I had to walk away from it. But yeah, yeah that one was probably the most proud for me. Other Barnyard's amazing, and we've done huge things. We've tripled that business. But, you know, that was going. But there's a cost to that. We had to pay a lot of money for it. Mm -hmm. But to start something from infancy, that even though it didn't end great, I am still probably the most proud of what we did with that because it we made it amazing. You know, we had struggles, as you know, um, mm -hmm. but it still was pretty impressive what we could do with it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, like, what has your greatest challenge or obstacle been to overcome as a business owner? For me personally, you know, I think a lot of people experience that stuff. I think self-doubt and self-limiting beliefs are hard on people. Um, you know, coming from the background I did of so poor and, like, just nobody did this stuff. And, I mean, I literally remember walking around on Halloween to, like, kids' like houses getting candy as a kid. And I'd see these nice homes, and I kept thinking, like, how does one get to this? You know, like what, and I look in the door and I'd be like, what is that like to live in there? And it wasn't so much the house, but it was just like having a life of like not poverty. And so growing up with that, I had that self doubt, the self poverty mindset of like, we're never going to be out of this. We're never leaving the trailer court. We're never going to have a business. You know, you just take what you get. And for me kind of getting out of my head and realizing like, I can do more than that. Like God made me amazing. Right. And I think if you just get out of your head, you stop self-limiting yourself. You stop putting the ceiling so low for yourself. And you say, I can do more. And sometimes you have to have those people. Um, Jonathan Shuttlesworth talks about if God gives you a dream, he will put the people in your path to help you create that. Because I don't think he ever gives you something big that you have to do fully by yourself. And so for me, it's been my husband, who's my business partner. It's been um, the workers we have. All that stuff has helped push through those things. But I think it's definitely a struggle for me to really remember, like, you can do it. Because sometimes I think, who am I? I mean, I grew up with you no know, special education. I mean, I went to college, but it was for office administration. I didn't go for business. I don't have a business degree, but I've got some freaking degrees from the street because I've had my ass kicked and I've learned some lessons, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, does that kind of yeah. help answer your question? Yeah, for sure. Okay. And so it kind of is along these lines, but what what do you do to help you push through those like really hard times? Um, I think it really comes back to multiple things for me. One is prayer and God. Like I always turn to him cause I struggle. I mean, there's times I was in such a horrible place that I didn't even mentally know if I could get through it. So I think he's helped me there. I think having a support system, you know, my husband, my friends, uh, you got to be careful who you turn to because there is, and I'll bring this up later too, but there is people that don't always care about you. You know, they're out for themselves. And so I think you have to be careful who you tell your problems to or who you're telling your hard times to. But the people that really do care about you, you can turn to them because, you know, entrepreneurship is kind of a lonely world sometimes, especially if you don't have a business partner or your husband's not involved in it or whatever, because people don't understand the stress and what you have to do. And, you know, you've got all your employees on your shoulders, right? Like you've got to make sure they are paid, they're happy, your business is successful, your customers are happy. And so, you know, just having a good network to turn to. For me, therapy's helped. Um, you know, I've talked about in the past where, like, that was not a thing growing up. Like, no one talked. That wasn't even a thing we talked about. Like, who, rich people do that, you know. But I think it's something that is worth the investment because you have to have somebody to turn to. And sometimes you don't want to tell your business partner, like, I'm struggling. And it's more than just business, you know. Because I think we put up walls of, like, we have to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we have to make sure that no one else knows we're hurting, you know. Because if they know, it, we're going to look less than or our ego doesn't like it or whatever. So I think just having all that. Um, 
And then something as simple as a vision board, I've done them. And then for me, when I get in self-doubt and concern and like, I can't do this or I'm never going to get through this, I look at that and because I track every year and I check things off that's happened. And then I start to realize like, geez, God's come through every time for me, you know, or I've pushed through or our business has survived that. And so I think those are reminders for us to like always remember all the good things we have because our head, we can get in there and we can tell ourselves things that are not true and we can self doubt and self limit. And then we like blow things up in our mind that are bigger than they are. Mm -hmm. So I think all of that is kind of what you have to have. I don't think it's just one thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then take care of yourself, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the mindset piece I think is, is everything. Can I ask, um, I'm going to ask you a question on that. Yeah. Um, how do you feel with what you do for, you know, with yoga and grief and mindset? Like, do you have anything to throw in that? Um, I mean, when I first started teaching, yeah, I really struggled with confidence. Mm -hmm. And I think that you, you know, you kind of just have to kind of get up there. You have to start doing it before you do it. You don't know. Um, how you're going to be able to succeed. And so I think just for me as a recovering perfectionist. I like just, that recovering. <laughs> yeah, I'm recovering. Um, just kind of letting myself get up there and I just, you know, I show up and I do my best and I'm holding space for others. And um, But yeah, your mental health is um, is so important. And I think coming back to the body and coming back to regulate your nervous system and building our capacity to actually hold all of the discomfort as well as all of the joy. I mean, that's life is a range mm -hmm. of those emotions. And we usually go through um, situations that are going to bring us to a higher place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it's all growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 40, almost 41 years old. And I look back sometimes in my 20s and I thought, I don't, you know, I was confident in a lot of ways because I was almost not cocky but like I hadn't had enough life to kind of balance it out do you know because mm -hmm. you think like you're positive about what's coming and you have this whole future ahead of you which can sometimes cause you to be a little lazy because you're like oh I have tons of time to figure that out but I'm at an age now where I'm like you know I'm at I'm well over halfway through my life and I have to now start looking at the priorities of my life and I know one of your questions coming up we get into a little bit which is kind of good but thinking about what you're saying like perfectionism I mean, I was horrible in my 20s. I mean, I'm still struggling with, like you are with that, because I want to hold everybody to the same standard I'm at, which is a very high standard, and I don't hit it all the time. And that I'm saying that because I'm hard on myself about that. It's too high of a standard. But then I find that I do that with all the people around me in my life, my friendships, my husband, like all these things. And you have to remember, I mean, God, they piss me off sometimes, but I'm like, I got to remember they're not me, and I can't even hit my own standards. So, you know, you have to be really careful with that. So I'm glad you brought that up. That's really good. And then can I ask you on yoga? Just, I know this is my thing, but I do want to know a little bit. How does yoga help with all that stuff? I mean, I feel like yoga helps because you are tapping into the body. So you're tapping into the like physiology. <clears throat> and so when you begin to tap in and slow down like your breath, you're beginning to tap into the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system, okay. which allows you to kind of relax. And I think like when we can come at situations from a more relaxed place, we're going to make decisions that are probably more aligned with our heart and with what truly what we value, what we, what matters. And so I think moving in a way with the breath, it just really it recalibrates the system. Yeah, I think that's actually really good, slowing down what you're saying. I mean, mm -hmm. and I could see how yoga, because it, it's a very calm and quiet play. I mean, the lights are, are they always off? When I was in my session, it was off. Is that normal? Uh, it depends on the class. Okay. I prefer less lighting. Yeah, because um, I can see, I mean, it really did calm me. I was, because mm -hmm. I went in there from work, just frenetic. And then I was like, whoa, I'm actually kind of relaxed after that. And I think that's business. I mean, you, and that could be one of these things here that you just brought up is you have to slow down. You know, I'm a high pace person and my energy is, I call it frenetic. It's like bees in my system. It's just going and buzzing all the time. And I think that will wear you out, especially in business. Um, 
just because you don't, you have so many things going on and I'm always in my head and I'm always trying to think ahead of for the future and I'm protecting everybody. I'm protecting myself, my business. And it's just like, if you don't take that time for yoga or something that can calm you down and slow you down, it does cause you to slowly burn out. And then I do think you had mentioned about making good decisions that are aligned with your heart and what your value. And sometimes when you're in the thick of it, you do not make those good decisions. You're just trying to keep going and you're trying to get it off your plate and, so that's really right. good advice that you just gave yeah. to slow down in. Well, because our, I think too, yoga brings us closer to the present moment mm-hmm. than most other forms of exercise or, you know, yoga is kind of exercise these days. Um, and the present moment is the only moment from which our future is created. And so I really do believe that if we are here, if we're now, if we're present with what is our experience, it will unfold as it should. Yeah. See, we need people like Kellen. That That is a business that would do well in the business world because in a bigger company, when you have executives and leaders and stuff, you could do a workshop with that because mm-hmm. we're all trying to keep it all together. And we have personal lives and things happening at home and, you know, mom's sick and, and dad's got an, al- you got an alcoholic in the family or whatever's happening in life is chaotic and you're still trying to keep your business together. And so people like you help us because then we can come to you and it's, you know, it's not therapy, but it's, it's another form of taking care of your body that it can calm you. And it's not as expensive as therapy. And some people are not okay with therapy. They think that's a crazy quack thing. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I think there's great potential for your business, Kellen, what you can do. And if I have any listeners who want to book this woman, she does, uh, you do zoom stuff too, right? Like I do. Yeah. I do virtual and in person. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good question. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for helping me with that one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so Bringing it back, what is the hardest decision you've ever had to make? I honestly was thinking about that. You know, there's always hard decisions. I have had probably two hard decisions in, in that affected my life in the business sense. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband had an opportunity to move to Wyoming uh, when I was, I don't know, like 23 maybe. And so we had to leave Minnesota, which is where we both grew up. For me, that was, and I bring that up only because that was the start of my journey. That's what led me into all these businesses, I believe. But leaving my family was so hard. I grew up so close to my family. And and then from there, we went to such a drastically different place of like the environment's different. My husband was never home. I was always by myself. Um, I didn't, I had some friends and I did over time. It took me like six years to make friends. I did it, but it was scary and hard. Uh, it changed me. It actually caused me to start having panic attacks and like anxiety because I just, it was such a drastic change for me. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was young. I didn't have a lot to stand on emotionally. Mentally. I don't know how to explain that exactly, but that was a massive change because I think it still today affects me because I still struggle with anxiety and depression some. Um, it's not as bad. And I, you know, at one point I couldn't leave the home. I was so freaking scared I wouldn't leave. And my boss, Margaret, forced me to the doctor. And I got some help, and then it, it got better. Um, but I think that was just the drastic change of it. So sometimes life is not easy. And then the other one for me in the business sense was having to leave the window cleaning business. That freaking ripped my heart out. That was hard because I built it for so long. And it ruins some friendships I had at the time. And, you know, I'm working on fixing some of that. And it was all not my, not all their fault. I mean, there was things I was controlling. You know, I try to control things. I've learned in therapy, that's my way of protecting me. Because if I can control it, I know I'm, it's safe, but it's not, you can't do that. You know, it doesn't work. And so I think that was hard. Um, learning some of the things I learned in that business about hiring, you know, I had to, for me, I let go of some of my values in the hiring because I was like, I have a business partner who has his own values. And so I would hire some people that I didn't want to hire and it would always turn into a mess. And I'm like, I should have stuck stronger in like, no, I'm not doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think um, that stuff was probably the hardest for me, but I also learned probably the most from that. Don't you think the hardest stuff is where you learn your most lessons? And Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. The pain is usually what leads us to... I don't know, just like I said, to that higher version of ourselves. Yeah. If we're willing to take it and transform it. 
Yeah. I mean, I also think in those moments of, it was a financial loss and it was an ego loss for me because my, I now have to say my business failed and all those things. But I also think turning it the other way of, like you said, I realized in that moment of how broken I was and things, not just that business. I will never just blame the business, my business partner. I had things in my life, in my childhood, all these things led up to those moments of like, I am now broken. And it's because of things in the past that I wasn't dealing with, you know, people dying things that happened to me as a kid, all this stuff. And so that broke me enough to realize like, you have to now go get help. And in some ways I'm actually kind of thankful for it. It's Mm -hmm. kind of bizarre, but I am because it got me to therapy. It got me to start dealing with stuff that I push away and, and things that I try to control. And so sometimes those bad moments have to happen, I think. So you can kind of, I mean, you have an option, like you said, you could just ignore it and keep going. And, Mm -hmm. but I want to, I want to be better. I want to be a better version of me. And like you said, reach the higher version of me because I can be better. And so it was the worst time, but I also, I'm very thankful for it. And I, I guess, you know, I would like to change it as far as I'd like to go back and have a great business again and have it all go perfectly, but that's not how it works, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and something I've been working on, uh, like within myself is reframing. Oh, okay. Tell me about that. The mind, like your thoughts. So like when you were talking about your business failing, well, technically it didn't fail. It's actually still in, in that operation. That is true. Very true. Um, and so it's not that it failed. It's just that it didn't work for you. Yeah. And the way that it was being operated or like just the way th- maybe the dynamics of it just weren't, um, yeah, just weren't right for your life moving forward. Yeah. Um, it's just not a reflection of you. You are so good. My therapist has actually told me something and I forgot about that. <laughs> But yeah, you are right. It is still going. And it it didn't fail in the sense that we went broke. I mean, it just, I think that's a good lesson for the people listening here that are business owners. Sometimes, you know, whether it's the business you have, the business partner, the town you're in, the friends you have, whatever, sometimes they're just not the right place for you. Or maybe it served its purpose and now you have to move on, right? There's a reason, a season, or a lifetime for things. And sometimes you, you can learn things from it. And I think that's what you have to really focus on, like you said, is reframing that is a really good word for that because that was one of the things at therapy I kept bringing up was I was a failure I failed it failed it failed and I she did say that I mean you said it good the way you just said it but it's like reminding me I'm not a freaking failure because that didn't work you know I actually Mm -hmm. am proud of how hard I fought for that and I did it with as much integrity and love and care as I could and you know sometimes you just have to walk away it's just what it is yeah right but yeah 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 well, good. Kellen's going to be a great, what is it called? Um, yoga coach? I am in a training for it's embodied yoga life coaching. Life coaching. Yeah. So I, people, when she's ready to go with that, I'm going to announce it and then you're going to fill her schedule and we're going to have her on at some point and talk about that because yeah, it's very, she's very it. good at what she does. <laughs> okay. Next question, Kellen. All right. Um, so what keeps you awake at night? Lots of things. Um, <laughs> It's interesting for my own business. It's always because I'm the financial person. It's always finances. I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe it happens in business. I don't have boatloads of cash. You know, it's not like I'm flush with money. I think anytime your business grows, a lot more is coming in, but a lot more is going out. Right. And so I have a hard time releasing control of that. I mean, I've gotten better, but just knowing that I'm always going to have enough for payroll and I'm going to have enough to grow the business and I want to do these things and we need a new roof and like all these things happen. And so I'm always thinking of that stuff, money, which I hate to have. I mean, it's, it sounds awful probably, but it's the truth. Cause if that's what, you know, my employees want paid and my vendors want paid. And the other thing for me, excuse me, is, um, because I do business coaching, I have businesses I deal with and it's all hard for me because I take it on so personally. Like I want them to be successful. I, I see things these businesses are doing wrong and I try to, you know, as a coach, you can't even, if I'm straight coaching, they have to realize that I have to talk them through it to realize it. But I see things on the surface. And even when I'm consulting, I'm like, this is not right. And sometimes I can't get them to change it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to do the work. They just want to leave it. But then they don't understand why things aren't better or it's too stressful or whatever. And I'm giving you like, hey, I see this. I'm on the outside. I'm telling you this is a hole in your boat. 
and you're not fixing it, you know, or you don't see the big deal that's happening here. And I'm trying to tell you as a spectator that cares about your business, like you need to fix this. This is the problem. And they don't want to see it. So even last night, I was up last night thinking about some stuff and I was like, I wish I could get this person to see this is not working. This is a problem in your business. It's going to become a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. And so that stuff keeps me up. I shouldn't probably let it get to me, but it does because I want to help them. Yeah. But I can't sometimes. They don't want to hear it. You care. Yeah. You want to see them succeed. Um, But yeah, that's hard to watch someone that maybe isn't making the best choices or that will propel them forward. Yeah. Mm. And so I don't know if that's something, you know, I always take that stuff on personally, which is my struggle because I'm like, what am I doing wrong that they're not getting it? You know, or why am I not getting this through to them? And then how can I fix it for them? And that's the problem. I can't fix it. You know, mm-hmm. I want to just fix it because it's my personal it's to go in. Let me just get to town and I'll fix it. And I can't do it. You know, they have to learn for themselves. And some people are more stubborn than others. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, our perspective of things is. What's that saying? You can't see the forest through the trees. Is that, <laughs> is that it? <laughs> I think so. I'm like you. And sometimes but... it's like relationships or business. You're so close and in the fire. You cannot see what is happening. And mm-hmm. it's so obvious to other people like this is not good. And they don't, they just can't see it or they don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. You know? So do you have a conversation with them in the beginning? Like, like basically saying, I am going to help you. Yeah. But I mean, you have to do the work Mm -hmm. yeah I always tell them you know my coaching it's a little bit tricky because coaching with business is it's not all just feelings and I mean there is things self-doubt and things you have to push through but sometimes it's a real business problem that they're having and so it gets a little bit messy I have to kind of do both and you know you just have to approach it like can I help you with this can I give you a piece of advice and if they say yes then I'm free to go and then they they have to figure it out but I always tell them I'm uh, I'm blunt I'm not rude but I'm going to tell you what I see and it's up to you to fix it, right? Like I cannot come force you to fix it. I can come into your business and work with you and consult with you and do all these things, but it's your job to fix it. Mm -hmm. And I just see, I have other businesses that I'm talking to right now. And I'm just like, what are you doing? I've told you 15 times, let's have this, let's fix this employee problem. Like you keep hiring the wrong guy and they don't, they keep not working out. And I'm just like, I don't, I ask them, what did you learn from that? Well, this, this and that. And then they do the same thing again. And I'm like, please stop doing that, you know, because you're wasting money on these people that aren't working out and then it's frustrating for you. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I do have that conversation. I don't think they want to hear it. And I think they're like, okay, sure. And then they just keep going. So, yeah, I mean, taking responsibility is hard. It is hard. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, We kind of talked about this already, but like when you are faced with moments of doubt, like what do you do to regain confidence? I think it's reminding yourself of what you've won in the past, like the battles yeah. you've faced, you know, so my vision board, my journal, things like that. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it takes stepping back from the business for a minute, you know, and sometimes you can't do that. If you are a small one person company, you aren't going to be able to do that. Uh, if you have a business partner where you can say, I need a minute to step back. I think that's why if, if you can make a business partnership work, it's friggin' hard. If you can make it work though, you have a buddy and a teammate because you know, there's moments where you say, okay, you are really good at this. I'm really good at this. Let me step back. If you can cover me here for just a couple of days or a weekend or whatever it takes, let me step back and think outside of the business, right? Cause sometimes you have to step back from it. Like I was saying about the trees earlier to see the big picture of what's going on. Because if someone can't step out of the craziness for a minute to try to get perspective of what is happening and how do we fix this, it's never going to stop, mm-hmm. right? And so I think having those moments of clarity of like, I have to step out of this for a minute. I need to take a break from it. Maybe I need to go to a conference or maybe I need to talk to another you know, friend of mine that's a business partner. Maybe I need a business coach. Um, I think just getting perspective is important. Yeah. I actually just wrote a blog on oh, this tell me about it. posted today um so just within yoga it's stepping into that witness um okay the seat of the witness and kind of that higher I don't know consciousness what that means. so it's basically where you can see your thoughts you can see your emotions and then what you're experiencing in this present moment but you decide to kind of step outside yourself for a moment and you realize that you're not your emotions Mm. you're not your thoughts 
that you can begin to have space within the situation to where you can maybe have those creative solutions that appear or different opportunities. Um, and so, yeah, I just actually released a meditation on it. I think that's actually really good. Um, releasing the thoughts because, you know, me being a fast paced person and I go right. And sometimes I don't like to like, I have this weird balance I have to find because I want to face it. Like my therapist tells me, you've got to face it soon because the longer it drags out, I just dig into myself and I get into my head and it gets worse for me. But at the same time, sometimes doing that, I just go with emotion and I let it out. And sometimes it hurts their feelings. It makes it worse. I say something I don't mean, or I, I'm not thinking fully clearly. So even though I'm not going to let it drag out for a week, I might, you know, give it a day to like, let it simmer because like they even say, if your employee makes you upset, you don't want to take them in your office while you're upset. Take a minute, calm yourself, get rational, get out of the emotion of it and then go and have your conversation. Right. Because I mean, do you have anything to add to that? But like, don't, you know what I'm talking about? Like when you're mm -hmm. emotional and you're not like thinking fully clear. Oh yeah. It's going to go awry. <laughs> yes. So usually those, um, reactions that come up are, uh, things from our past that we haven't dealt with. Oh, usually. Okay. Uh, cause usually after that happens, what do you feel? You feel bad. You usually feel remorse. Um, and you're like, that's not who I am. Why did I act yeah. that way? And then you spiral. That's a very good point, Keller. Why I should be why don't why don't we just talk about you here? <laughs> you are so smart. <laughs> no, I think that's really good. Um, I've had to do many apologies in my day, especially with my business partner, because he would make me mad and I would just let him have it. And then I would feel bad because I'm like, am I right in my, what I'm saying? Yes. Did my presentation come off way wrong? Absolutely. I would have gotten an F from my teacher because it was terrible. So I think just remembering to like, like you said, take those moments, really reflect on it, get out of the emotion. And then, you know, do Kellen's meditation. Yeah. How do yeah, we get that to like, my listeners? It's, <laughs> the metaphor I've been using that helps me is that your emotions are always changing. So mm. it's like a weather. Mm -hmm. The weather will not just always be rainy. That's absurd. You know, That's a so. Good point. Yeah. Um, and the witness consciousness, again, is kind of just like going back to how you believe in God. It's that divinity within us that is rooted in love. Yeah. And you know, for, in compassion for ourselves mm -hmm. and for humanity. So, yeah, I like that. That Cause it is amazing how fast our emotions can fly from one direction to the other. It's like considerably crazy actually, mm -hmm. like to see how fast I can be like up and then I'm down. And it's like, Whoa, that changed fast, you know? And so that's good. I like that Kellen. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. else do you got? Um, what is the biggest factor that has helped you be successful? biggest factor um I think there's not just one thing I think you have to persevere in life um as we all know life kicks your butt I mean I worry about these young people because I'm looking at them being raised in these schools where it's like they don't get who they voted for and they have to have literally Harvard had puppies and cookies for the kids that are like in their 18 to 20 year old. I'm like, you're not going to survive when your paycheck doesn't, it bounces and it doesn't clear the bank or when your mom dies or your brother has cancer or I'm like, you're going to not make it. It's going to be rough for you. So perse perseverance because life is hard. Business is not easy, you know, and I think you always have to keep pushing through. Because mm -hmm. sometimes there's days I want to, you know, go fetal position and just stay in bed. I can't get out. And, but you can't do that. Like you're not going to get anywhere. And so I think perseverance is huge. Being determined, like me being a kid, I was determined. I am not living. And that is not for my family who listens to this. I love you all. There's nothing wrong with any of you and you're all very different. But for me, I could not, like, I can't do trailer park living. Anymore. I cannot live a poor, sad life. I can't do it. I want better for me. I want better for my family. I mean, I had dreams of all the things I wanted to do to help my family. Like, I can't live that anymore. Like, I don't want a generational thing here, you know? Mm -hmm. And that is nothing against the ones that did it. That's okay. Uh, it's just for me, I am so determined to figure it out, which can get me in trouble sometimes. You know, I get into stuff I shouldn't be. But sometimes I'm like, I just want to figure it out, man. Let's figure it out together, you know? So uh, determination for me, God, um, you know, he's always helped me. He's come through for me more times than I can say. I think always doing things the right way, that is something that is, that's like a core value. And that is literally ingrained in me. Do not lie to people. Don't treat your customers like crap. Don't, um, 
Don't fake it with people, you know, just be real and build your business based on that because you want your business today, how you want it in 20 years. You don't want to start half ass with crappy everything. And then in 20 years, you got to try to fix it. I don't think you'll even make it 20 years, but it's just easier to do it right the first time. Same thing with my employees. If you're not going to do it right the first time, just please leave it alone. I'll do it because you're going to create more work for me. It's going to cause more problems. Um, I think teaming up with really good people, finding the right people for you that fit with your culture, with the way you do things, the way you want your business to go. And then you take good care of them. You, you love them like family. You take care of them. And I know I've, I've actually heard some seminars lately that were like, you can't treat your people like family. That's fine for you. That doesn't work for me. In my business, they are my family. I will take care of them until the last second they walk out the door. And then I can't help as much, but I'll do what I can when they call. You know, if I see them at coffee or they call me up and need help, I'll do my best for them. Mm-hmm. So I feel like for me, that's important to me. Um, I think you have to always be learning all the time. You know, whether you're reading books, podcasts, videos, seminars, on a daily basis, be learning something. Don't you agree? Mm-hmm. I think you and I are similar that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Growth yes. is a pretty big value for me. Yeah. What do you so, do to... For success? Yeah. Like, what's your opinion on that? Um, I mean, I'm naturally a disciplined person. You're um, very disciplined. A natural kind of... I get up, I show up no matter how tired I feel. That's on my list coming up. Show up. Um, Yes. But I think for me, the biggest thing, like as a recovering perfectionist is that I just stay consistent. Mm -hmm. I, I write the blog before I'm ready. That's great. I post or, you know, I post those YouTube videos, even if I messed up and said left and then had to correct myself and I meant right, (laughs) you know, I, so it's, I think staying consistent has been like the biggest growth. I think the thing that I'm seeing within myself is that you reach a certain point within your success or, you know, whatever success looks like for you. And then you have to keep going. You have to push beyond those limits that you've created for yourself because you can get stuck in certain ways that you're like, oh, this is easy now to post this YouTube video. I don't get nervous anymore, whatever. Okay, now how can I take it to the next level? Because like I need to keep growing because now it's just kind of stagnant. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. That's kind of my thoughts. And you think on the growing part with the stagnation, um, if by pushing through that, you don't you think that can help reignite the passion again of like, yeah, because I don't think you just like change fields like, no, no, this is boring to me. Like you got to get, you know, figure out new ways to, you know, it's not. Yeah, it's not that it's boring. It's almost just more we get comfortable with mm-hmm. what we know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, OK, well, I don't really know how to grow a blog let's figure it out, you know? So it's like, yeah, I'm doing great by writing them. But then how can you like, you you know, you just have to kind of uh, keep pushing yourself. So like even um, something I've been thinking about is creating an ad and actually like posting it to Facebook or Instagram and seeing what happens, you know, like it's just those things that feel uncomfortable as you're starting a business. Um, And yeah. Yeah. Pushing through it. Um, and I think it builds the resiliency, like what you're yeah. talking about. And the adaptability, because yeah. like you're saying, you're adapting because you're like, I, this, I've got this now. I think there's something, well, they're not going to like that, but I think there's something wrong with you. If you get to that point, you're like, I'm just cool with stopping here. I mean, like, I don't think you're really an entrepreneur. I don't think you have that spirit then. Mm-hmm. It's not so much more of stuff. You just want to kind of push the envelope. I think that's the other thing you have to be kind of. I don't, there's a, you can think of the word, you're a word person, but like you're a fighter. Like you want, no one tells me what to do. I'm going to push it into as far as I can. That's not in the disrespect or any of that, but like, I don't want you to tell me what to do. And this is not the limit for me. I want to make my own ceiling, right? Like I want to figure out how far I can push it and how high I can make this business or how great or how many people I can help. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's part of kind of that is like pushing through and seeing what else you can do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Believing in yourself. Cause sometimes if you're not super confident, you can be like, well, I did that and I'm okay staying here because it's like you said, comfortable. And sometimes you grow the most, your business will grow the most in that the development stage of like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to research it. I'm going to find the people to help me. I'm going to figure out where do I go to get the, the information I need to push that along. Mm-hmm. And that to me is like growing business is some of the funnest stuff. 
even now I was talking to my, you're going to probably think I'm insane, but, uh, I was talking to my business or ex business partner the other day, and I was like, he was like, What are you what are you gonna do next? And I was like, I mean, I'm I've got some things in the works, but they're kind of a slow growth for me. But there's other things that I think I could push faster that excite me. And I was like, I have some business ideas that I'm debating. And so he just asked me because he's in the window business. And so I said, he said, Would you ever do that again? I said, I don't know. I kind of have interest only because I didn't get to finish it. In my mm-hmm. and I'm not saying necessarily with him, but that's probably not a good idea, but somewhere else, another town, I don't know where, what, but I have the general toolbox and I could do things better because I've learned some lessons and mistakes I've made and I could, the profit side, I could blow up pretty quickly, I think. And so that side interests me only because I like the growth part. Like I don't like when it's just like, okay, we're just here now, you know, at this level. I'm like that. I don't want to just get stuck at a million and a half. I want to hit five, you know, I want to figure out how do I get there? Because that's what's exciting to me is the push and the figuring it out, not mm-hmm. just the like, I'm comfortable now. I know people like that. They're comfortable and they don't want to have to do anymore. And OK, if that works for you. It doesn't for me. But so, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. It is. So then um, do you have any daily habits that you feel like have contributed to your success? Well, this is where my show up every single day. Like you have to show up. You have to get out of bed. I I literally make my bed every, the first thing I do, make my bed. That's done. Then, you know, we all have our habits, but I think getting up, I try to read every day. I like to read something, even if it's not a whole chapter, it might be only a few pages that night, but try to make progress on that. I think it's good to move your body. So, I mean, this is really stupid probably to most people, but I'm like, I was doing my personal trainer for, oh, that sounds bad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was using a personal trainer for two years um, and I was doing that consistent. And then I just kind of needed a minute and my trainer was not fully working out. And so I took a break and then I realized like, oh, I'm not moving at all now. So I'm doing two minutes at night of sit ups and I'm doing two minutes of push ups. And I'm like, it's something like you got to just keep moving. And if you like to walk or whatever, um, for me, I try to organize my stuff every day. Like the end of the day, I clean up my desk. I mean, that is something to me I need to do because I don't like coming in with stuff everywhere. First thing in the morning, it instantly sets me in a place of like chaos Mm -hmm. and that's drastic, but it really is. I'm like, I don't know where anything is. I don't know where to start. What do I do? I like calm. So I, then the same thing. I don't keep crap all over my desk. I don't like stuff everywhere. For me, it's like, it makes my nervous system kind of worked up and it's just more stuff I have to move around and keep clean and I don't like it. So organizing, um, I always try to do like three things every day that I have to get done. And then the rest will have to wait if I can't get to it. So like right now, sales tax has to be done, payroll, whatever it is. Because sometimes in my mind, I have this massive list. Because, you know, as an entrepreneur, just like in life, you have a million things to do. And you have to pick what's most important, what's really going to move the needle. What can I give away? And that's in one of these books that we'll talk about here coming up. But what can I give away? What do I have to do? And what can wait? Because mm-hmm. if everything's important, nothing's important. So, yeah, I think for me, that's the main thing, setting goals, you know, staying consistent. But you have to show up every day. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Do you have anything to add so, that you do? Because you are well, really good about sticking to what you do. Yeah, I have a, I mean, I have a morning ritual that is basically sacred. Do you mind sacred sharing ground. it? <laughs> At least anything um, that you're willing to share, you don't have to give it all of it? It, I've always had a movement practice in the morning, but when the pandemic hit, um, I really, I don't know what shifted, but it's like, I had a different routine, like working from home, like most people. And I developed where I got up, I made my coffee, I sat down and I read. So at least for 20, 30 minutes with my coffee, Mm -hmm. um, I do yoga or meditation. Do you spend much time in the morning doing that or? Uh, It depends. I would say getting on my mat for five minutes is better than not getting on my mat at all. So if I have time for a 20 minute practice, that's great. Um, But I try and do at least five minutes minimum. And then I walk my dog Mm -hmm. and, you know, I sometimes I'll listen to a podcast or um, another thing for me, like disconnecting because I am so like I feel busy or like I do have always something to do. Is that like I'll leave my phone behind when I walk intentionally Mm -hmm. to not look at my phone, to notice the sounds, the birds, you know, kind of coming into that present moment. But I walk three times a day. And she um, does a lunch walk still, right? Yeah. But you have a dog, which helps. But yeah. Okay. Um, So just like getting movement throughout the day, 
really helps me. So yeah. like if I am maybe tired or whatever or struggling mentally, just getting out in, in nature kind of resets me. Yeah. So I like to, it's like, I don't really work out per se, but I just like to move throughout the day. I think yeah. that's important for me. It works for me. I like the phone idea because I think we get so busy on the phone all the time. I mean, it's just constantly looking at your phone and it's, it's an addiction, really. It's not mm-hmm. good. Uh, I like the idea of the walking at the quiet and in the surroundings and then which I think would probably help with kind of calming yourself because the day is so heck, especially at the end of the day, the day is so crazy to just have some quiet for a minute. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause even when you get in your car, the radio's on, something's happening. Sometimes you're still getting calls. Sometimes you're listening to a podcast and I think these podcasts are great, but I think you have to have some sort of quiet time. Like you need time to recenter, refocus, have the moments to even just process your thoughts. Right. Yeah. And I think if you have a family, it's good to do that before you go home because you got to think about like, whether whatever you are if you're an entrepreneur or you're a worker you're you've had a hectic day you have to now come home to a family that you want to be present for and you know kids are busy and wild and crazy and all this stuff's happening and i think you have to somehow switch off like how do i turn from daddy the business owner or mommy the business owner to like now i'm home with the family that's a different mindset and so i think if you can use your drive home to to stop the music and everything and just get it you know i don't know if you have a good thought on that but like how to recenter yourself to get home to like this is family time yeah I struggle with that so yeah I mean for me like is what comes to mind is like I have to on Mondays right now I leave work and then I have to switch into yoga teacher mode um that can be sometimes a hard shift so people might think I'm crazy but I get there at least 45 minutes to an hour before my class starts so that I can ground into being a the yoga teacher yeah. the seat of that yoga teacher and I take a moment to me the breath it always comes back to the breath so really if breathing. you can like really take a deep and I mean like a full belly breath you can even just like feel the system like you might want to sigh <sighs> and you let the day go you change like you know you just kind of like let the day go you come back to this present moment and you're like okay so it kind of resets you almost. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good advice. I mean, anything you have today that you can throw that they could do, because I think you have to have something because I see, I, you know, and I don't have the children's side, but I've seen that in friends of mine. Like we would go and like the kids are you know, daddy, mommy. And it's like, they're like, Oh my God, I just got off this crazy business call. They're a little bit worked up. And then they have to try to deal with the kids. And I, I get that it's not easy, but I think you have to learn to make that transition to have the balance in your life of like, but now mom, you know, your wife or your spouse or whoever's at home with the kids, they now need you as dad and and husband or spouse or whatever. And so I think you have to shut that off. And for me, I cannot, I, I mean, I've gotten better, but I was horrible at it when I had the second business, I would just constantly work. Mm-hmm. And it was like, John, I'm busy. I'm working. And he would go do his thing. And so there's a lot of things that are my own fault because I didn't know how to shut it off or with my business partner, I call him at seven 30 at night. Cause I need an answer. Cause I'm working, but he's like not answering. And I get kind of like, why aren't you answering? And he's like, well, I'm with my family. And so for me, that is a, a line I would cross too much. There wasn't a good boundary there of like, I have to remember he has a family. He has to go, he has five kids to take care of or whatever. And that's a lot of work. And so I would forget that and think, why, why can't you just answer your phone for like two seconds? I'll get off the phone quick. But my husband always tell me it's a boundary you don't have because he has a life outside of this, you know? And so it's hard for me because I don't have the kids. So it's like yeah. just learning all that as you navigate all the stuff. I'm telling you, learn from me. I made the mistakes. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think, you know, like in a realistic situation, like if you are coming home, you pull into the garage taking three to five breaths. Okay. To reset. I'll try that. Just to reset and just to like take a moment. Sometimes it's like we think we need like a whole afternoon to ourselves. <laughs> but do you know how sacred it can be just to take that moment to yourself to just kind of like be with yourself and know that you're you're kind of shifting into something different but you know that you want to show up for them the best that you can. And like yeah, stepping into like you know you want to be the best partner, you want to be the best mom or dad and um, you know, it's not selfish to 
take care of you. Maybe you need to actually pull off at a park and go for a walk before you go home. You know, just like listen to what is is needed and that self-awareness is really key. Yeah. Because I think even moms, I've heard moms talk about that. Like they don't get a second from the kids, you know. And I, I mean, I've experienced a, a teeny tiny bit babysitting for kids. I'm like, uh, there's a piece of candy and I want to eat it. And the minute I open that wrapper, the kids were there. Where's the candy? And I'm like, uh, there's no candy. And they're like, what are you eating? <laughs> and so like, I literally have seen memes of like moms hiding in the closet eating their chocolate. And I'm like, I get it because I couldn't even open the wrapper. They heard it. I mean, and these poor moms are with them all day. So I think anything you can do as a woman, a man to take care of yourself and take care of your, the people that you love around you, mm-hmm. that's showing up to be the best version of you, right? So if it's those breaths, that's a great idea because I think you do think I have to do all these things and make it so complicated and there's so much time invested and I can't do it and it becomes an excuse of why you don't take care of you, right? Mm-hmm. And so Kellen's got genius ideas here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this podcast. Just, Just listen to Kellen. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, next one. Um, so if you could go back, what would you do differently, if anything? In the general sense of a person, I would work less. You know, I, I mean, I, I understand you have to work and I am a worker, but I, I've worked so much of my life. I missed out on so much stuff. And when I say that, I don't mean that like in my 20s, I don't think I once went out and did anything like I, and I know I'm not a drinker, but like and I'm not saying you have to go out and party, but like I didn't go out with my friends. I didn't. I just was like, got to get somewhere. And I was like, not taking a break. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to, my line was straight and I couldn't even have any veering off. And so due to that, I worked too much. I didn't go home and visit my family enough. My mom, I didn't get a lot of time with her before she died once I left. And so I have regrets for that. Um, I think worrying less, I'm a worrier and it didn't, hasn't changed anything. It doesn't, it puts faith in the bad, right? Cause you're like, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. None of it happens. It's like when you rehearse a conversation 25 times in your head and they don't even say, I'm like, wait a minute, you didn't say any of the stuff I prepared for. (laughs) So not worrying so much, um, enjoying the wins. You know, I've talked about this on some other episodes, but like, man, we just, we hit a million dollars. We hit a half million dollars. We grew these businesses. We doubled them. We tripled them. And in the moment I was like, that's great. What's next? And like, I've talked about that with my husband, like we'll walk up that mountain and I get to the top and I'm exhausted. And then instead of taking 10, 15, 20 minutes to enjoy the view, I'm like, let's go. And we're back down the hill. And so I think I've just passed or let too many great moments pass by without really celebrating them because it's a lot of work to hit a million dollars in a business. It's a lot of work to double it, to triple it, to start a business and keep it going past two years is hard. You know, it doesn't usually happen. And so I think I forget to celebrate the people sometimes in my business. I try, but like I get so busy and I think I forget to remember, like, especially my husband, who's my business partner or my other business partner, I wasn't celebrating the things they were overcoming for themselves. Right. And so I think you get lost in the big picture. And at 41, I would say, slow down, enjoy the moments, you know, enjoy the trips, take those trips. My husband at times would work so much. We'd have to cancel the trip we paid for. I couldn't get my money back and he had to work. And I was like, man, I would love those trips back. I, we paid for them and we were, we took the time off of work, but work came first and you canceled everything and went back to work. And it's like, what do we get at the end of the day? Oh, we have this badge. We're hard workers. We're great. Who cares? You know what I mean? Like, obviously you have to work, take care of your family and pay your bills. And, but I think life is more about the moments and what you're doing. And I hear people talk about legacy. They want to leave a legacy for their kids and the problem I hear with that is the legacy is the building, the business, whatever. I could leave a $5 million business with tons of money in the bank, but if they didn't get to ever see me and they don't have any good memories and they don't really like me because I was never home, what kind of legacy is that? Mm-hmm. Am I crazy? I'd yeah. like to hear your perspective. You're a woman. You want children. I mean, how do you feel about that stuff? Yeah, no, I think um, it goes back to that saying of like, people don't really remember what you say or do they remember how you made them feel Mm, that's good they really do yeah um and so you know your kids are only going to be five for that year like you know Mm -hmm. you're gonna miss moments if yeah if you're working all the time yeah Um, and I think too um it's like we can get so focused on the future which is again why it's so important I think to kind of bring ourselves back um to the present And then also something that has been helping with, I think, even within myself, 
as well as like other people is to like expand your view I guess it kind of goes back to that witness but like expand your view out and retrain your thoughts to actually see all the good that they did even when they're showing up not great it it reminds you and then you build evidence like no he did this and he did that and you know he's really great at this and you start to see the person as the whole rather than maybe like their behavior or something but that came through when you were kind of talking about you know like just getting caught up in well every time I hear something like that it's always instant it resonates in my spirit because I'm like it's again me forgetting all the good times right Mm -hmm. like yeah and I'm going to bring this up right now only because I did a podcast recently that just dropped and I had a conversation with someone about it and they were like I feel like all you did was trash me and I was like I I feel bad if that's how it came across because I didn't mean it that way but I, I think you do forget like you only remember the hard stuff. We were having a conversation. I'll come back to that in a second. I actually was having a conversation about someone who passed away and they were like, the problem is with the situation is everybody remembers all like it's, you only want to remember the good things. We forget like they had mental illness. They struggled, man. They were not always okay. They were not always the best parent, you know? And so like you talk about that stuff and you're like, you just, your memory goes back to like, let's remember the good stuff, right? On that case. On this other case, it's like my mind goes to the bad stuff. Oh, it was this, it was tough. It was hard. It was this. I forget about how many times he actually did show up or, you know, my business partner did a great job in a lot of things. And, and he then eventually had his own struggles that came up and it's just like me, I have struggles and I couldn't get through mine. I mean, I had to walk away. I couldn't do it, but I forget like people have their moments, their struggles, their hard times. And then you forget about all the good they have done in life. Right. And so even though it may not be the journey I need to be on, it doesn't mean it was all bad. Yeah. And I'm thankful for the things I've learned. And I'm thankful for the moments of like you said, taking the time to say, okay, my marriage sucks right now. Sure. But at the same time, there's been a lot of good times. You know what I mean? Or my friendship was rough and it really stinks right now, but I forget about all the years we were best friends or whatever. Right. So like, I think you have to, I think that's a good point you just brought up really trying to remember their people. They have their own things, right? They Mm -hmm. have five kids to take care of. They've got a spouse that died or, you know, I mean, I struggle the same thing with my mother. Sometimes it's like in therapy, I, I can't even talk about the times that it wasn't easy. She was not a perfect mother. She had mistakes. She had men beat the shit out of her. And she had alcoholic husbands that were not nice to her. And she didn't always have the, she had parents that were abusive. And not everything bled through perfectly for me, but she was there for me. She didn't send us away. You know, she loved us the best she could. And was it perfect? No. In the moments, I think to myself like, hmm. I can't say anything ever that she did wrong because it makes me feel like a bad kid. But I've learned through therapy, like they're people, you know, Mm -hmm. my mom's a person, my best friend's a person, my husband's a person, and they are going to make mistakes. They're going to mess up, but you can't just focus on that stuff. Same thing with me. I mess up. I cannot be so damn hard on myself. I have to be okay. Like I'm doing my best. I really am trying. I just sometimes mess up. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. we're human <laughs> so we are killing remembering that is i don't know how much key. longer the democrats are going to agree that we're human but we're human <laughs> right now <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> um so as a leader what personality trait should should every leader have i think leadership i think integrity Mm -hmm. Um, which kind of bleeds into respect, which then bleeds into influence. Because if you have integrity, you run it honest, people know they can trust you and your word means something. To me, my word is my bond. And if I give it to you, I'm going to do every damn thing I can to make it happen. You know, sometimes, you know, I I maybe can't fully fulfill it, but I'll do my best, you know. Um, But I think if you have that, then people will respect you. Your team will respect you if they know they can trust you and that you mean well for them and you're trying to do it the right way. And then that influences them, right? Mm -hmm. um I think you have to have some vision you have to be able to lead your team and it's like I picture leaders in a military it's like your guys your troops are going to follow you into battle I know this isn't life or death battle here but it's like they will follow you if you have vision if you can talk them and explain to them where we're going and why we're going there and there's a purpose behind this if they believe in it they will follow you Mm -hmm. am I right in that Yeah. yeah yeah um I think empathy is important. You have to understand where people are coming from. We, I mean, we just talked about that. Like sometimes in business, you're like, can you just do it? But you have to remember maybe they're in a moment of like 
something bad just happened to them. You know, you sometimes don't even know what's going on in people's lives. I had a window cleaner come in my office, a male that just busted down crying. And I was like, what? I didn't know what to do. And I mean, I, I'm emotionally intelligent enough to know, like, I'm going to help him through this. But I was also like, I don't know what's going on. And he wouldn't tell me, but he couldn't go to work. And I was like, hey, I can't send him in the field like that. And I don't know what's going on with him. So I ended up sending him home for the day. But in moments like that, I could have been a boss of like, get out, you're fired. You can't go to work. But you have to remember, they're going through something. And sometimes they don't want to tell you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, gratitude, I think you always have to be thankful for what you have, where you're going. I'm thankful for the team I have because they, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. And then resilience, you know, bouncing back when the, it's hard sometimes as a leader when your person doesn't want to listen to you or they, maybe they're having a bad moment and they kind of mouth off to you and it's like, wait a minute, you know, it's hard to be resilient, but you have to remember one bad moment doesn't ruin the whole bunch, you know, it doesn't make all the moments bad. And so I think having moments of like, this went wrong, the whole machine crapped out, the building burned down, whatever happened, we're going to be resilient, we're going to figure it out, and you're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess coming back to your integrity, like that is like such a big piece for me. Um, and that to me is rooted in our authenticity. Yeah. And really like staying true to like what we fully believe and showing up in a way that is integral with ourselves. And then, you know, and then you just lead by example. Like it, um, it took me six years to actually, um, teach because after I finished my yoga teacher training, I knew that I was like, I have to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have to be able to embody yoga more before I can teach. So I really think that as a leader, you have to, um, embody the qualities that you wish to like see yeah in others because then you inspire them and oh that's good um and yeah so i that's the big piece for me and then really in those which integrity is that what what are you doing when people aren't looking right mm -hmm. because there's moments as a business owner, it's like it'd just be easier to just come up with a friggin' excuse here and or just kind of wash it on the table no one will have to know but it's for me, it's like, I know God knows. And I'm telling you, man, the stuff in the dark always gets brought out. Like it may take a while, it will get brought out. And then you're going to look like a chump. I mean, like, don't do it. Just do it the right the first time. I believe people understand we make mistakes, things happen. And if you, if you've led with that, I think, and I don't mean this egotistically, but I think if you talk to my people, they would all say, I lead I think I lead by example. I, yeah, you do. I will own when I mess up. I will apologize mm -hmm. when I mess up. Um, I will tell you when you do great. Like, I think we all have to just really just be authentic. Like you said, be you. And if it's, you know, if you're a little rough around the edges, I get it. But then just be that. Like, don't pretend to be something. There's nothing worse than like thinking you know someone and then they're not that person at all. Because mm -hmm. then it's like, what else? Even a little lie. Anytime I hear one lie, I'm like, but now what else are they lying about? Because you don't usually just lie about one thing, you know? It's, yeah a pattern or whatever. And I'd rather you just make me mad, tell me the truth and I'll get over it and I'll respect you for that. Because mm -hmm. once the respect to me is gone, it's hard, man. Cause I don't, I don't want to hear what you have to say anymore. I don't care. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And then the other thing I was kind of thinking about with like traits for a leader is, um, becoming a good communicator. I really do mm. think communication. I think most people, you know, like if you do have your own business, like your employees are still people and they do need to be heard and seen. And like you said, appreciated. I think when you can communicate that in a way that they are able to receive it, I mean, can we talk about communication relationship you can have? We, we've had this situation in the past because you've worked for me at a different company and then you're back yeah. with a different company I have and communication has always been hard now I don't want to go into specifics right I don't want to hurt anybody here but like can you tell me as an employee as a, a female as a yoga teacher communication like what does communication look like a good communication to you in the business sense I mean it looks like how we we do our reminder calls mm -hmm. we do our follow-ups we check in with our customers um, if we, you know, are saying that we're going to check in within six months, you do that. Yeah. Um, if you're running late, 
you say so. Mm -hmm. If something went wrong during the job, you let them know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like all through that. And then if like within the team setting, again, if you are running behind, if you are running ahead, let me know, you know, or let us know the the people who might have to like call someone and let them know, you know, who might have to take action. Um, so I just think it's doing that and doing it consistently. I really think consistency um, is key because as a company and if you're running it with integrity, <clears throat> you you always show up. I mean, it just yeah. comes back to that. You show up you and you're consistently letting people know. Yeah. No, I think I agree 1 million percent on the communication. And I even think it's not that hard to like, I'm not a tech, but you know, if I'm in the field, I'd be like, okay, I I finished the last job person in the office. (laughs) Like I am done for the day. We're good. Or like, um, even to me when it's like, I say, I'm going to call you right back. And then I try calling someone to get the answer for you and I can't get it. I will at least text you and say, I tried and I'm stuck waiting for an answer because Mm -hmm. otherwise you're on the other one. Like, did they not call them? Did they call them? Did they forget to call me? And if I have to call you five times for one answer, we're just wasting time. Mm -hmm. Like just send me a text or whatever. Call me and say, Hey, I tried, man. I'm going to have to wait for this answer. Cause I understand not everybody's fully accessible all the time, but just communicate. I mean, tell your people what's going on. And then they learn to trust you. They learn to rely on you. They learn that like this guy has got my back and I will just like they with them, you know, in the office, if we just had this crazy thing going on with the text and we don't tell them the job canceled, well, they're going to waste their time going out there. If we don't tell them the job pushed to a different time, it's going to be a mess. Or we don't tell them the job is not window cleaning now. It's now gutters. They're going to clean the windows and it's going to be a big mess. So like it has to be communication. It, It really should not be that hard. Actually, probably would put that almost at the top of the list, I think. Because even as a leader with your team at work, if, you know, Dan, who's my leader at the barnyard, didn't tell the boys the schedule for this week, or like this is a rush, or the windows didn't make it, or the window changed sizes, the whole shed's going to be messed up. Yeah, it's or, a ripple, yeah, ripple or effect. They don't tell the office, we didn't get the shed done, and we're trying to deliver it tomorrow. Well, where's the shed? It's all, it's just one big mess. So, yeah, communication's definitely good. Mm-hmm. Anything else on that? no no okay we covered it all can you imagine communicating yoga without talking be just like movement with your arms be like a mind yeah yeah (laughs) you should do that that'd be new (laughs) yeah that'd be fun they would just have to watch me though which would take i guess that would be kind of weird okay that's not a good business (laughs) nobody do that (laughs) you want people to get into their body when you're doing yoga that's an idea we can get our callers to like call in tell us their business ideas and then we can be like that's terrible this is great (laughs) this is why (laughs) next question we can approve (laughs) (laughs) be like you can't do that next (laughs) um so the next thing I wanted to ask you was if there was like one book that you would recommend to business owners I have two books I will say on my website and on my podcast, I have a list of books I recommend, but I'm, I can't narrow it down to one, um, two for me. And I'm not saying these are like books that are going to blow your mind, but there's really things that for me, I was like, huh, I really have to start doing that. So one is who, not how, but Dan Sullivan, because you have to stop doing everything. When you're a small entrepreneur, you're starting out, you are doing everything. You can't wear all the hats forever. So for me, as I started to get a little bit more money in the company, I was like, I just don't want to do all these things. I can't do them all. I'm going to stifle the growth by trying to do it all. So it's teaching you like, go find the who, the person that can do it, whether it's the graphic designer, the um, website designer, it could be I don't know, warehouse manager, whatever it is, find them instead of you spending forever going and trying to, you know, learn how to build a website. Well, my time is better spent somewhere else. I'm not good at that. It's going to take me like way longer and my time is very valuable. And so why put all that energy into it when you can literally let someone else do it and you can focus on sales, you can focus on bringing the money in, right? So that is one. And then essentialism, it's the disciplined pursuit of less I don't know how to say this guy's last name. It's Greg McCowan, McKeown. I don't know, but that's a good one because it determines how to get more done in less time by doing the right things. So those two kind of go hand in hand. There's so much to do. It's like my top three, pick the three things that are going to move the business today. You know, I could spend two hours filing and I could spend an hour cleaning and I could do all these things, but I would rather do payroll and I'd rather do my sales tax so I don't get fines and my employees don't quit because they didn't get paid. Um, I would rather focus on calling my leads, right? 
than maybe going and trying to reorganize my map of the lot. I'll figure out the lot map if I don't have time, but my leads need to be followed up on because that's money for the company. So Mm -hmm. to me, those are two really good books. Do you have any books you like? I mean... That you could pick one? It's so hard. There's so many. Yeah, that is hard. And I'm trying to think of like ones that have stuck with me. I mean, the most recent is the Atomic Habits. That's really good. Mm-hmm. That what stuck out the most in that one for you? Um, I just I always come back to that one percent rule. Yeah. So like it reminds me of like in yoga, it reminds me of this idea of titration where you. So like nature is naturally expanding and contracting, you know, like we have seasons, things are cyclical. We're always, you know, it's always changing. And so this idea of titration is that you, you do a little bit that might feel uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and then you kind of come back to what, you know, so it's like you push your limits. So it's like you do 1%, maybe two months from now you do 2% more, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's just kind of that idea of that growth mindset. Yeah. Um, And it doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little bit at a time consistently. (laughs) It's all about consistency. Yeah. Cause you can do 30 minutes or two hours, but if you only do it once, it's not really going to move much needle or it's not going to change your body or whatever. So I actually just watched uh, him. He did a, not a speech, but I can't yeah. think of these words. Like a talk. A talk, thank you. This I don't know summit. why I'm here, Kellen. You just take it. Um, yeah, he did a talk at the Dave Ramsey Summit, and he was talking about his book. And one thing that really stood out was he was saying like that, the 1%, you can make a change. And it doesn't have to be 35 minutes every day. Because sometimes in my mind, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to fit 35 minutes of something in. But he said you can start with something. So that's where my two minutes of sit-ups came in, two minutes of push-ups. Because I'm like, it's not very much. I know it's not going to like transform my body quickly, but mm-hmm. it's a start. And then like you had said too, as I get stronger with that, two minutes will be too easy and I'll go to three minutes and four minutes or whatever. But that in my mind, I can process things. You're like, oh yeah, I can do two minutes. I can, you know, set my daily, take my vitamins, drink my water, do whatever. And if I start small, it's realistic to me. I can do it and I get the habit set. <clears throat> And then from there, I can increase that habit, right? Mm -hmm. It's just remembering to do it is the hard part. So, because I can't wrap my mind around two hour workout right now. I just can't do it. Yeah. But, you know, two minutes. Yeah. And when you're in the setups, it's like, is this two minutes ever going to (laughs) end? Yeah. It's like the longest two minutes of your life. (laughs) Yeah. So (laughs) that's a good one. I like that one. Yeah. There is tons of really good books. And I think your goal should try to be, if you're not a fast reader, I understand. I try to do at least one book a month. Sometimes Mm -hmm. I can do them like one a week, but you know, at least read four books a year. I mean, if you can do one every three months, that's pretty slow. Yeah. You know, I understand if it's like psychology book and it's super deep stuff and you really got to put some thought into it, but most business books is pretty basic principles that you just have to remember or sometimes you don't even think about. And so you've got to be inputting something in, you know, so what comes out is what you're putting in. And so if you're just putting crap in all the time, then crap's going to come out. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and I think I saw this book on your list, but another one that has stuck with me, I read it probably a year and a half ago now was I will teach you to be rich. Oh yeah. Um, What's that I think it's name? Ramit Sethi or yes. something like that. That is a good one. But that book changed the way I view, um, I've always, you know, I've always been like good, fine, like with my finances, but it just kind of gave me a very different perspective on what I could actually be doing to like how did save it change for it the for future. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it comes back to almost what you were saying, like leveraging, like with that essentialism, like le- leveraging your time. So like leverage your money, like yeah. open up a savings account that has a higher interest, um, even something I learned from him was, and this has helped me invest in my business and my personal growth and trainings is finding a credit card that has a long window of zero APR. Mm-hmm. You're using their and money. And then you, yeah. And then you make a plan to pay it off within that window or sooner. And I mean, you know, so it's just like leveraging things like that. It's changed. Yeah. I mean, it's so interesting because I've heard both sides. Dave Ramsey's straight, no debt, no debt, which I agree with on some things, but I don't fully because I'm like, if I didn't do the debt, I would have no business today. I had to take debt on to get that business. I have made some very good money in business and uh, not business in houses that I've either flipped, bought, resold, even just living in them, reselling them two years later. Some of them I've made 80 grand in, in one. I made $80,000 in nine months. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. And it was like major money. And so that I had to take debt on to get. So even with the debt coming off, you know, the expense of the interest, it wasn't that bad. And so I think if you're smart, like you said, and you leverage it correctly, where it's like, I'm going to use that free money is what it is, as long as you pay it off in time. Because if you don't, now you're paying a crap ton of interest. But if you're smart with it, that's a great way to leverage, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I would never tell someone, don't start your business because you have to go in debt. Now, you don't want to go in debt without a good plan because you could lose your house over it. You know, if you leverage your house for it to get the debt, to get your business going, you need to be sure you've got the confidence, you've got the drive, that you're going to show up every day for that because you're going to have to hustle to make it happen. And so be smart with it, mm-hmm. like Kellen is. And I'm pretty smart with it myself. I'm very cautious with it. I try to be careful. You know, but you have to be careful because you can make bad decisions with that as well. But yeah, um, for sure. Also going with that same thing there, I'm seeing it in some businesses I'm dealing with right now. They don't want to hustle. It's like, I want to start a business and it's all going to fall in my lap. No, nothing falls in your lap. The customers are not just going to come knocking on your door. You have to get out. The customers don't even know how to find you. You have to get out there. You have to do your, whether it's door hangers, advertising, you know, social media, networking, whatever it is, you flyering something go get out there and do it because people I'm seeing this generation of people that are like, Oh, I started the business. Now the customers are going to come. No, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. You have to freaking hustle and you have to push and it really sucks. But if you put the work in for a couple of years, it will start to naturally then grow on its own. I mean, we've seen it, how it just explodes naturally. Once you've got a good reputation, you've got some good reviews. So that's just my thing to you. If you think that's how it works, please don't go into business. You're not ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Um, what's one change like I should make or a new business owner should make right now to help us like move towards success? One change. I mean, if you're already in business, I would say you have to take a look. You have to take those moments to step outside the business. You need to work on the business, not always in the business. Mm. And in those moments, it's like, what is working? What's not working, right? Do your marketing ROI. Like if you're spending a money and you have that money to spend on marketing, track it. How, who's hearing about me? Where are they hearing about me? How much money am I spending? How much money did I spend on that? How much money did it bring in? What's the return on that, right? That's working on the business, not in the business. Because if you're just always on the job site or you're always out selling and you're not looking at your numbers, you're just, it's like a boat. You have a hole and it's just going to funnel through there. Or you have a basket and you're bringing the money in, but it's sucking right through the bottom. Well, why? Where's the holes? So you got to figure that out. Look at your employees. If there's employee problems, you got to handle them, right? So I think it's taking time even at the beginning, there's always problems. You got to figure out where's my money going? What's working? What's not working? What revenue channels bringing money in? What's not, you know, is it time for me to hire someone? Am I burning myself out? Am I limiting my money I'm bringing in? Cause I only have so much time. And then really look at like, again, I go on the other side, especially new businesses. You have to look at your family. Am I hurting my family by doing this? Am I taking care of myself? Because right now, you know, like in the window business, I've said that before. I've heard pe- women at the conferences say, you know, I hate that business. It's, it's my husband's mistress. Like mm-hmm. he's always with her, you know, and I want him to come home. And I think if you burn your family down to get to that, you're, you've just missed it totally. And you're going to be so miserable because that business won't provide the emotional stability, the mental, the physical, you know, and it's going to destroy your family. That's not why you started your business. Most people start their business because they want to do it to help my family. You know, I want financial stability. I want all these things, but they lose sight of that. And so I would say, look at that because one of the questions you have coming up is what I think success is now. And we'll talk about that, but really take the time to look at what am I doing to myself, my family, because man, the business takes over and it has to for a little bit. Maybe you tell your wife in the next couple of years it's going to suck a little bit, but I promise you this will happen. This will change. I coached a guy recently and he was, he just works way too much and he's not even bringing in the money he needs to, to, for that much work. Right. And his wife was there and she said to him, I need you to take some time off. And he's like, I can't do it. And so we, I, I have to check in with him to see, cause I think the thing's coming up soon, but his son's birthday is coming up. And she was like, I want you home for his birthday. And he's like, I can't. And I told him, I said, dude, you can't do that. That's not okay with me. Like, I'm your business coach. That is not okay. You need to take one freaking day off, spend it with your kid. He's only going to, you know, be this age once. He's little still. But, and then like find some time for your wife. Because if you lose your wife and your family, I'm telling you this business isn't going to be that great to you. Mm -hmm. So that to me is like, take time, look at the business, look at yourself. What are you doing? Don't get to focus on just one thing. Don't get tunnel vision. That'll destroy you. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, relationships are really all that we have. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Business is money. I mean, that's it. It provides financial stability, but the relationships, like you said, your, your teammates are your, you know, you have relationships with your team members, you have relationships with your business partner, you have relationships with your wife. And when you leave there, it's not business anymore. The business doesn't lull you to sleep at night, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's not what it's all about. And I think it's too easy to, especially really driven people like me, you, you forget that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's cool for a minute, but it it does get very lonely. You know, Mm -hmm. you don't want to do that forever. And if you've pushed everybody away, relationships are hard to build. Don't you think like it takes a lot of work Mm -hmm. to have good relationships. So why push them away? You know, keep the ones you have, put the energy and the time, the effort to keep what you have Mm -hmm. because it doesn't come along. They're not there every day. You know, there's not a Kellen everywhere. Right. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. And if you're busy working, I mean, we grow, we change, we evolve. And so, you know, before you know it, you might not know your partner anymore. Yeah. So it's sad. Or even your kids. I mean, I see mm-hmm. some older people I know that had businesses and their businesses were great and their kids don't, they never spent any time. And I actually hear them say like, and I actually hear it with people that work for other people too. They just put all their life into the other company for this, you know, they retired with great pension and all these things. But I'm like, they literally said they didn't spend any time with their kids and their kids are kind of messed up. And it's like, now what? What good did that do? Because now you have a generation that doesn't know their dad. They don't like their dad. Now they, they're going to treat their kids probably... And you could go either way on that, but you know, if you go the way of your dad, you're going to ignore your kids and just like snowballs. Mm-hmm. I just am for family. I, I'm for business. Don't get me wrong, but you've got to do it the right way. You've got to have the balance of take care of your wife, your kids, go home, love your family, you know, take care of your husband, whatever it is and treat your kids good mm-hmm. because that's what it's about. That's the next generation. Yeah. Yeah, right? it's true. Mm-hmm. I got to get my mothering in. I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> Next question. Uh, So the last question um, I have for you is how has your definition of success evolved over time? So coming out of poverty was money for me at first. It was like, I want to be rich and not like the greedy rich, but like, I want to have a nice home. I want all these things. I want my people to be happy. But then over time, I've realized that's not what it's about. I mean, we've made good money. We've done it. It can be still lonely. It can still be very depressing. It can be sad. And so for me, success is, am I happy? Do I have happiness in what I'm doing? Do I have passion for what I'm doing? I'm not saying every day I'm like, holy cow, I can't wait to go sell a shed. But there's moments of like, I enjoy that. Like I am, I'm making a difference in my team members' lives. I'm making a difference. I'm helping my customer, you know, get their crap out of the garage or whatever. Coaching, I'm trying to change their business and get them a life that's more calm and established and happy and balanced and all that. Um, I think time to enjoy life is major important. Now that is one thing money does buy. It does. If it's done right, we'll buy time. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I understand time is not like interchangeable. Like you can't get more of it, but like it gives you the ability. Like now in my business, I can say, Oh, I want to go have coffee with my husband. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't have to work. I can say, John, let's go have a coffee because I have people that can handle it now. So it buys that in the sense of that freedom is what I call it. Um, Mm -hmm. I think just making sure success to me is my team's taken care of. They're happy. Now I understand they're not probably all going to stay forever, but the time that I have them, I'm going to pour into them. And if I see, when I hear them laughing that you probably have seen it cause you work for me now, uh, it's, I enjoy that. I mean, it can be a little bit like I'm on the phone guys, but at the same time, I know they're having a good day and they're going to go home and they're going to be good to their families because of that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I think time to help others. Like I want to have time for me, it's the coaching or whether you, volunteer or whatever you do but it's not just about money it's about having the time the freedom to take care of your family pour into them pour into the people around you into your community if you can do that you know whatever your passion is and then just enjoying what you're doing because it my advice to is life goes so fast and I mean 41's young but it's not young anymore you know like I'm still getting to the age of like I gotta start thinking about where do I want to spend my time? Who do I want to spend my time with? What kind of legacy do I leave? I don't have children to leave stuff to. So for me, it's more about like the experiences, like you said, the memories, how I made them feel, like how much could I help you without burning myself down? Cause I have to watch that a little bit, but I don't know. I think it just becomes a bigger picture. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're 30. Do you want to say your age? Yeah, I'm 35. I'll be 36. Do you think that's changed for you? What does success look like for you at this age? Well, now that I'm really, I guess, embodying and taking on 
like starting my own business mm-hmm. um i think it does look like that freedom having a day that is structured in a way that really supports me so that i can show up and be able to help people um in the way that i want to and so i think it's like really success for me will feel like i have um almost come home in a way like being able to authentically live in a space where I can connect and be with others and help them. Um, that's what it'll look like. And the days will be structured. Um, yeah. In a way that allows me to, to just have that life. And it's almost like setting the foundation, like just having really a strong foundation within myself and within my business to create the life that I really mm-hmm. want. I mean, I really think that we are the empowered designers of our life. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we have that power to create what we what we really want. Yeah. And I think when you're young, you know, you're in your 20s, you have your whole life. And I don't even think you realize, like, I didn't, like, what I have to think about for future. But in those moments, it's like survival. Like, I just mm-hmm. have to, and you have to start. I mean, that's, I respect that. I respect the hustle of your 20s because you are single, typically. You don't have kids yet. That's when you hustle. That's when you put all that extra hard work in. And I see too much where kids don't do that today. They're just lazy and they're in their basements. And it's like, get off your ass, go get a job. Because when you're 40, you don't have the energy. Hopefully you're married with kids or you're married or you've got something that you're going for, right? Whether it's an orphanage or whatever. Like that's when you got to start pouring different energy into it. I think it becomes less about the money and it's more about the people and the Mm -hmm. purpose of what you're doing here. And what are you leaving behind for someone else? What kind of mess are you leaving behind? Um, <clears throat> I see people raising their kids and they're just doing a horrible job. And I'm like, you know, you're, that's the generation to come. They're going to have to deal with that. They're going to have traumas. They're going to have these things happening. And I'm like, that's not what it's about. It's not about like, just, you know, it's not all about you. It's about other people. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I feel like we're here for a purpose and it's not just for me. It's not just to make me happy. You know, I need happiness. I need to be able to do that to fulfill myself and to help others. But I feel like you got to get to a point in your life where it's not just about you anymore. And I think probably kids mostly does that for people. I don't know. I don't have them, but I've heard people say it changes your perspective of like, I have somebody else to care for now and I have to do it for them. Mm -hmm. Where for me, it's always just, I got to figure it out because I don't know what else to do. I have no kids to take care of. So do you think that would change it a little bit? Yeah. I mean, asking yourself like what you're in service of, Mm -hmm. you know, it's Mm -hmm. a really good question to ask and then you live from that place you know if you're in service of love like yeah are you gonna go out and yell at your grocery clerk like you know (laughs) like what are you in service of I think it really were you at the grocery store behind me yesterday (laughs) (laughs) no just kidding but no I think that is absolutely right and putting out what you want to get back you know Mm -hmm. what is that law for that is that Murphy's law no Murphy's law is the one that'll go wrong if it can karma well karma yeah you know like what goes around comes around yeah and if you put out that crappy energy and you treat people poorly, you're going to get it back because mm-hmm. no one's going to respect you. No one's going to care about you that way. So, well, yeah. uh, is, is that all our questions? Yeah, that's we made it. Thank you okay. so much. Well, thank you very much, Kellen, for having you on. I hope you all enjoyed her. She's super smart. She always brings the smart side to this here. Oh, no. I have knowledge, but she says it the proper way. So, <laughs> hey, she teaches me how to spell you- stuff. <laughs> I'm always like, Kellen, how do I say this to not make people mad? <laughs> But at the end of the day, we thank you very mm. much for listening. Um, thank you, Kellen, for coming on. Yeah. We, I am going to get her on at some point fully talking about her business. She wants to get it launched, and she's training now. So yeah, we'll have soon. more to come from her. Um, and like I said, we are reaching out to people. Kellen, what are we we're offering for people to come on to interview them? Yeah, um, if you are like a small business owner, um, we would love to just have you on the show just to get your expertise and to help inspire others. Um, so you can apply at lightupyourbusinesspodcast.com um mm-hmm. we would love to to hear from you yeah and uh there's a new thing on um buzzsprout just came out with it on our podcast at the top of the episode there's a send us a text message and it's an easier way to get a hold of us if you have a comment an idea for a show you want to come on you just want to tell us your story whatever you can comment there and we'll definitely respond um like subscribe share follow us uh you know help us get out there we just want to help people and so we thank you very much for listening and we just hope you all have a great day yeah. thank you thank you 
And remember, in the world of business, every success story begins with a passionate dream and ends with a strategic billion-dollar handshake. Stay ambitious, stay innovative, and keep making those deals that reshape tomorrow. Thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, remember Proverbs 3.3 says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. That way you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. And remember, if you like what you heard today, click the follow button so you never miss an episode. Are you ready to take your small business to new heights? With Faithful Coaching, you'll receive personalized guidance rooted in both practical business know-how and deep faith-based principles. Picture this, achieve your goals with clarity, purpose, and unwavering faith. That's what our expert coaches specialize in. Whether you're just starting out or looking to expand, our tailored coaching programs are designed to meet you where you are and propel you forward. Say goodbye to overwhelm and self-doubt and hello to confidence and success. Join the Faithful Coaching family today and step into the abundant future you've always envisioned. Visit faithfulcoach.com to schedule your free 30-minute consultation. Let's make your dreams a reality together.